Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Be sure to check out Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks. TCG Player for cards at great prices while supporting local game stores. And Patreon where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. Check us out on Twitch every Wednesday evening for great games of CDH with special guests every week. If you sub to Twitch, you'll get additional perks such as access to our Discord. On February 26th, we are hosting a CEDH tournament on our Discord. It will be 100% proxy friendly and there is over $1,200 in cash prizes. All you have to do to participate in the tournament is sign up to our Patreon. We are coming at you with another game from MTG Vegas. We will be playing in more events as they come throughout the year, so stay tuned to our social media to find out where we are going to be. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Zack, Paladin Godo, Bandit Warlord. This deck seeks to cast its commander and gain infinite combat steps using Helm of the Host. Zack's opening hand contains a Magnetic Theft, Basalt Monolith, Cryptic Trollobite, City of Traitors, Jessica's Will, and his London Mulligans are a Buried Ruin and a Grafdigger's Cage. Next, we have Cameron from the Lab Maniacs, piloting Inala, Archmage Ritualist. This deck seeks to leverage Inala's ability in conjunction with Wizards to combo off and win. Cam's opening hand contains a Cephalid Coliseum, Underground River, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual, Tainted Pact, Spellseeker, and his London Mulligan is a Brainstorm. After that, we have Trevor, piloting Najila, the Blade Blossom. This deck seeks to attack with its commander, get an ever-growing army of warriors, and eventually close out the game. Trevor's opening hand contains a Savannah, Marsh Flats, Douthy Voidwalker, Ad Nauseam, Underground Sea, Miscast, and a Mana Crypt. Finally, we have Ian from Comedian MTG, piloting the partner pair of Thrasios Triton Hero and Bruce Taro, Boris Herder. This deck, called Dawn Waker Thrasios, seeks to create growing advantage and eventually find one of its overlapping combos. Ian's opening hand contains a Breeding Pool, Lotus Petal, Arbor Elf, Miscast, Training Grounds, Mana Confluence, and an Emergence Zone. Without further ado, let's kick off this gritty grizzly gambling guesswork. Zack rolled Snake Eyes at the crap table and gets to start us off. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a City of Traitors. He casts a Cryptic Trollobite where X equals 1. Zack passes. Cameron draws a card for turn and plays an Underground River. He casts a Lotus Petal. He taps his Underground River and casts Dark Ritual, adding 3 black. He cracks his Petal to cast Spellseeker. It resolves, then Anala and Spellseeker trigger. Cameron fetches up a Calling the Weak into his hand. He casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Spellseeker, adding 4 black. Cameron then pays for Anala's trigger and creates a copy of Spellseeker. Spellseeker enters, and Cameron fetches up an Unearth into his hand. He casts Unearth, returning Spellseeker to the battlefield. Anala and Spellseeker trigger, and Cameron fetches up a Burnt Offering into his hand. He casts Burnt Offering, sacrificing Spellseeker, adding 1 black and 2 red. He then pays for the Anala trigger and creates a copy of Spellseeker. It resolves, and Cameron fetches up a Finale of Promise into his hand. He casts Finale of Promise, where X equals 1, casting both Calling the Weak and Unearth, sacrificing a token copy of Spellseeker, adding 4 black, and then returning the original Spellseeker to the battlefield. Inala and Spellseeker trigger. Cam fetches up a Reanimate into his hand. He then pays for Inala's trigger and creates a copy of Spellseeker. It enters and Cameron fetches up an Entomb into his hand. He casts Entomb, fetching up a Scholar of the Ages into his graveyard. He casts Reanimate, returning Scholar of the Ages from his graveyard to the battlefield and then loses 7 life. Inala and Scholar trigger. Cameron returns Burn Offering and Entomb to his hand. He casts Entomb, fetching up a Shallow Grave into his graveyard. He casts Burn Offering, sacrificing Scholar of the Ages, adding 4 black and 3 red. He then pays for the Inala trigger, creating a copy of Scholar of Ages. Scholar triggers, and Cameron returns Shallow Grave and Burnt Offering to his hand. He presents a loop of casting Shallow Grave, returning Scholar of the Ages to the battlefield, paying for Inala's trigger, creating more and more Scholars with haste, and then sacrificing the original with Burnt Offering. With infinite Scholars, Cameron moves to combat. He attacks each opponent, and Cameron wins the game. Wow, that was an amazing showcase of Anala. Let's do another game, shall we? In this game, Zack brings back Goto, and his opening hand contains a Lightning Bolt, Expedition Map, Cryptic Trollobite, Cursed Mirror, Dwarven Ruins, City of Traitors, and a Treasonous Ogre. Cameron brings back Anala, and his opening hand contains an Intuition, Underworld Breach, Vampiric Tutor, Tarnished Citadel, Brainstorm, Misty Rainforest, and his London Mulligan is a Grim Tutor. Trevor brings back Najila, and his opening hand contains a Jeweled Lotus, Elvish Spirit Guide, Esper Sentinel, Forbidden Orchard, Final Fortune, Swan Song, and his London Mulligan is a Thassa's Oracle. Ian brings back Thrasios and Bruise, and his opening hand contains an Enlightened Tutor, Hallowed Fountain, Sylvan Library, Mana Crypt, Tropical Island, 
Temple Garden, and a Windswept Teeth. And Cameron gets to start us off. Cameron draws a card for turn and plays a Misty Rainforest. He passes. Trevor draws a card for turn and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide and adds a green. He casts Avacyn's Pilgrim and passes the turn. Ian draws and plays a Tropical Island. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Sylvan Library. With a good start in the books, Ian gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Dwarven Ruins into play tapped. Zack passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Cameron cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Still in the end step, Cameron casts Vampiric Tutor. In response, Trevor taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Zack a spirit, and casts Swan Song. Vampiric Tutor is countered, and Cameron creates a 2-2 bird. The turn moves to Cameron. Cameron draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He casts a Mana Crypt. He ends his turn. Trevor draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He casts Esper Sentinel. In response, Cameron casts Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. Cameron then cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Cameron casts Intuition. It resolves, and Cameron fetches up a Wheel of Fortune, Lion's Eye Diamond, and a Pact of Negation. Ian gives him LED, and the others go into his graveyard. Then Sentinel resolves, and Trevor moves to combat. He attacks Ian with Najila. Najila triggers and creates a 1-1 warrior tapped and attacking Ian. Ian takes it, and in his second main phase, Trevor cracks his Arid Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Knowing that Cam is poised to win on his next turn, Trevor taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Zack a spirit, and casts Final Fortune. It resolves, and Trevor gets an extra turn. He passes the turn to himself. Trevor draws, hoping to find the out he needs to win the game right there. Unfortunately, he doesn't get what he needed and doomed himself. He moves to combat and attacks Ian with Najila and a warrior, creating two more attacking warriors. Ian takes it all, Trevor moves to his end step, and loses the game. During his upkeep, Ian wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. In his main phase, he plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. Ian passes. Zack draws and plays a City of Traitors. He sacks his Dwarven Ruins, adding two red, and casts Treasonous Ogre. It resolves, and Zack pays 18 life to cast Godo, Bandit Warlord. It enters, and Zack fetches up a Hammer of Nazan onto the battlefield. Hammer triggers, and Zack equips it to Godo. Zack moves to combat and attacks Ian with his spirits. Ian takes it, and Zack passes, with the table scratching their heads. Zack explains that he knows that Cameron is poised to win on his next turn, much like Trevor knew. Ian is currently sitting with 6 cards in hand and 4 mana up. He knows that his attempts will get countered, so he is letting Cameron go for the win so he can win on the follow-up turn. The turn moves to Cameron. During his upkeep, Cameron wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Underworld Breach. In response, Ian casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling Cyclonic Rift from his hand. Breach is countered and Cameron passes the turn. At the end of Cameron's turn, Ian casts Worldly Tutor, fetching up a Gilded Drake onto the top of his library. During his upkeep, Ian loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. During his draw step, he draws 2 extra through Sylvan Library, paying 4 life to keep 1 extra. In his main phase, he plays a Windswept Teeth. He casts Gilded Drake. It enters and targets Godo. In response, Zack pays 3 life through Ogre and adds a red. He casts Lightning Bolt, killing Gilded Drake. Ian cracks his Windswept Teeth, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. Ian ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and then pays 3 life through the Ogre to help cast Cursed Mirror. It enters as a copy of Godo Bandit Warlord. Zack then sacrifices Cursed Mirror and then fetches up Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. Hammer of Nazan triggers and Zack equips Helm to Godo. Zack moves to combat, Helm triggers, and Zack creates a copy of Godo. He presents a loop of attacking with Godos, getting extra combats, creating more copies, and swinging for the win. Ladies and gentlemen, what a lightning fast set of games. It was wild just to see how blazing fast CEDH decks can win, and tonight's games really showed that off. In game one, Cameron's knowledge of his deck and his lines helped him close out the game on turn one. No one even had a chance to interact. In game two, Zach playing smart allowed him to steal the win from Cameron. Cameron was demonstrating LED and Wheel of Fortune in his graveyard, so he had to be stopped. Zack played his seat positions well and swooped in for the victory. The most viable card in tonight's games goes to Anala, Archmage Ritualist. This card, sitting in the command zone, is what enables the entire Spellseeker combo to go off. 
being able to create copies of wizards without your opponents to even be able to interact makes for a truly devastating commander. A big thanks to Ian, Cameron, and Trevor for playing with us at Vegas last year. Be sure to check out Comedian MTG and The Lab Maniacs on YouTube and social media for more great content. Links are in the description below. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.